clickety-clack. I don't know what the cool kids are doing. You can check me out um, across all the platforms on It's Nadia Favorite, including my podcast, Cut the Foreplay. My OnlyFans is... I'm just kidding. There's no OnlyFans. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to The Source. My name is Tatiana Gisharo and today I'm joined with the lovely Nadia Favri. So my first question to you um, surrounding lupus is, what age were you diagnosed with lupus? I got diagnosed at 27, um, but I had symptoms from 17. Oh so it took 10 years of just like absolute confusion uh, to get to that point and that's wild. 10 years is a long time to just be like, what the is happening yeah. to me? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's crazy to hear. And I hear it can be, people can get lupus because of different things. Mm -hmm. Have you been so lucky as to be able to identify the cause? Was it genetic? Yeah. Was it drug induced? It's, it's definitely um, genetic. Uh, my mom was quite unwell and uh, she had really similar symptoms to me and obviously like motherly instinct was like you should test Nadia for lupus as well because they found out that she had it mm. and sure enough that's how I, they figured it out oh my god just because so of my mom everything all made sense and yeah. all the dots connected yeah, yeah, yeah it's crazy still to me that that took 10 years it, it does and circling back and it's it's one of those things uh, where you constantly have to be aware of the world as you are navigating it and this is why because I sat through so many doctor's appointments explaining the same things over and over and most of them would be like you've got anxiety or you're overreacting it comes back to that like women oh, uh, no. hysteria yeah. kind of vibe you know and yeah. i was like no i think something's definitely wrong uh and if it wasn't for my sweet gentle loving mother i would have been like i'm actually going through a psychotic break because it's not normal to have that many symptoms and mm. somebody who's a professional to shut you down and be like no nah, you're, you're good yeah yeah, For yeah, 10 yeah, yeah. Years, i can only imagine yeah so um please enlighten us as to what living with lupus because it doesn't have a cure yeah so what hindrance does it cause to your day-to-day -day life Ooh. um that's a big question i think i have i get up every morning being like, I gotta check in on two parts of me. Uh, there's regular Nadia, who's like really upbeat, high energy, uh, you know, run a 10K, go like dance all night, have an hour of sleep and I'm still living, I'm good. And then there's like the other side of me that's like mid conversation, my body would be like, oh, shut down, gotta go home, gotta lay down. So I think I gotta check in on Lupus Nadia to be like, how are we doing today? Like, where are we going with this day? And. Uh, it's still unpredictable, but I think once you check in on yourself, you can kind of navigate your day, but it mm. does affect me 100% constantly, mm. all the time. And I, I don't even know how to, to properly kind of convey that. It's just kind of always on the back of your mind. You're like, hey, oh, checking in, checking in, checking in. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry to hear That's that. That's all right. Um, I saw that when I was doing my research that lupus is usually characterized by flare-ups and then remissions. Yes. So when you experience a flare-up, what symptoms normally bother you? And, mm -hmm. you know, just in case someone is living with it right now yeah. and they have no idea, what symptoms does it give you? And have you found any remedies to alleviate some of the symptoms? Um, so I think it's different for everybody because it attacks, your immune system attacks different organs. And for me, the chosen organ is, is uh, my heart. So, um, yeah, mostly it's like palpitations, arrhythmia. It's just a very, you know, you're like something is wrong. So I think that kind of like uh, snowballs into like uh, fatigue and mm -hmm. uh, low grade fevers. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of uh, what you live with. But for me, it's the ticker. If it's like uh, regularly, I'm like, oh, la 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 la. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Brrr! And I'm like, there you go, Some, okay. something's, something's wrong there. But people have it way worse, to be fair. Some people have like collapsed lungs and you know, this and that. And yeah. uh, uh, I'm not diminishing like what I'm going through, but at the same time, it's important to, to, to count mm -hmm. your, your, your blessings. And I found that going vegan definitely has helped me. Uh, I went vegan about four years ago. And if my symptoms were up here, as soon as I went vegan, like a month, two later, I was down here. Oh, wow. Like I can navigate life 
kind of semi-normal with this as opposed to before where I was like heavily dependent on medication. Mm. And I and found like I'd actually like us to dive into the veganism once here for I'm it. done with this portion. Yeah. Um, when the pandemic hit, because mm. we know our lupus is an autoimmune disease, yeah. meaning that it attacks, it's your immune system attacking your perfectly healthy cells and tissues. Yeah. Um, so definitely, and then COVID is something that attacks your immune system. Yeah. So when the pandemic hit, what does that mean for you with the underlying condition that is lupus? That's a big question. Uh, so it, how I like to explain lupus, because most people are like, I don't get it, is uh, I picture my body as a house and my immune system is uh, the security that I put in to take care of my house. But then every time there's movement in the house, the security system just breaks the house. Do you know what I mean? Kind of shoots at me mm. and uh, breaks down my house for no apparent reason. I'm like, why am I still paying for this damn security system? Yeah. If it's not working. Um, uh, but to, to circle back uh, to your question, what was it like navigating the beginning of the pandemic without uh, vaccines or any? Yeah. Woo! I have never known what it was like to live in constant fear until then. It's just like impossible to, to interact with anybody or do anything without thinking about this but also keep in mind that I was working from home partly in Mombasa and so I had to think about my mom who's in her 60s who mm -hmm. has lupus so it was just like well yeah. constant worry um, uh, it was interesting to see how other people kind of navigated that and the privilege that they had of being well oddly enough that didn't make me feel bad it just kind of made me feel like okay people exist differently and it must be nice not like must be nice <laughs> but like it must generally be nice to, to be able to navigate the world being a little bit more certain of your health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, especially because during that time you had people who were scared, and then you also had people who were like, whatever. Just, yeah, uh, just some COVID, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've also read in my research that lupus affects your nervous system. Yeah. Um, in extreme cases, it can cause seizures, psychosis, yes. and then um, at the same time, depression and anxiety. Yeah. Have you ever felt? Um, those effects and then where do you draw the distinction that I'm anxious or no this yeah. is my lupus making me anxious um, I think like mm, more naturally I'm not a very anxious person I have the opposite of uh, what normal anxiety looks like because usually it's up here and then it forces itself into your body and then you feel it everywhere the anxiousness mm. but for me since I have a relatively faulty heart it's it's the the heart that kind of tricks my body mm. it's like hey this is how I'm moving and you must be anxious and I'm like no I'm sure I'm, like I'm chilling and it's then eventually it like kind of takes over and I'm like well I have to be anxious because my my heart's beating at a hundred and something you know a oh. minute you know okay. uh, yes yeah, so it's 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 a weird opposite effect yeah. uh, but both are very valid and in both scenarios you really can't talk yourself out of it you're like it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. And um, lastly, why do you think it's so important for people to create awareness around lupus? Because um, living like that is hard And gosh, we just learned like, it took you 10 years woo! to get diagnosed. That is no way to live. Like, uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that on, on anyone. Um, I think also uh, lupus affects women mostly More, and yes, then women of true. color uh, the most um, and even even when you go to the doctor if you look at the charts on how to you know identify that somebody has lupus it's all based off of white skin so a butterfly rash mm. and stuff like that mm. things that are very obvious uh, so for yeah. my mom for instance she would go in and they'd be like no you're, you're good but then when I look at her now very obviously she's got the the butterfly rash but she's got brown skin so they didn't know how to how to see that mm. uh, so I think we have it we have it pretty rough already going through life as, as yeah. women you know of women of color I'm like one less thing on your plate prime I agree a hundred percent and I hope you know if someone is at home watching this and they felt like they might have lupus just go and get tested mm -hmm. lastly I cannot have Nadia Favri in a chair uh -huh. talking to me before she tells me about veganism. Uh -huh. Why did you become a vegan? What has it done for you since? You know, why is it something that you're so passionate about? You vegan snack. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I feel so full now. Um, uh, I think it's um, many reasons, a slew of reasons. Uh, I think I was having 
shrimp. It was just a couple of years ago, uh, like five years ago. And each little, little dude that I ate, I was like, oh man, that's another being. <laughs> I know it's a really weird train of thought, but I was like, this is another being and another being. And I just couldn't stop it for some reason. And I was like, okay, after this meal, that feeling will go away. And it didn't. So initially it started off with like vegan for the animals. And then I realized if I go vegan, maybe I won't have to take so much medication. And then it was vegan for health. And then I realized that going vegan meant that, um, you know, if the entire world went vegan, we could eradicate poverty. I'm like, oh, so it's for the people potentially as well. And then for climate change and and then it just kind of took over my entire life. And now I'm here like looking up cruelty-free makeup brushes and uh, the <laughs> no, whole. But if you're gonna do it, you do you it. Gotta, yeah, way. that's what I yeah. say. Like 100%. you gotta go in hard. Okay, we really appreciate that. I hope you've enjoyed being on the other side of being asked the questions. It's been for lovely. Once. I'm glad. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this and more entertaining articles. Stay tuned to www.capitalfm.co.ke forward slash the source. My name is Tatiana Gishero and it's been a pleasure.